Hey guys, my name is Shai, and today I am talking about a very fascinating and powerful message I have been receiving, or many messages that I have been receiving about the reptilians and the Hadarians and their connection, and how this is related to greater cosmic themes, greater galactic themes. I have been thinking for a couple of hours how I'm going to express all of this, explain it. It This has been coming in for several days. Just now it's all making sense. So I apologize in advance for being confusing. I'm going to try my best to pull all of these many threads together and express this. So I went ahead and I pulled some cards. These three over here using the Murder of Crows tarot. These three cards are for the reptilians. We have the Hanged Man, the Lovers, and the Fool. And these three cards over here are for the Hadarians. This is the Moonchild Tarot. We have the Lovers again, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Emperor. And when I pulled these cards, I kind of wish that I had done it on camera now, but I was literally standing here going, holy fuck, because it completely confirmed everything I have been receiving for days and the messages I had been thinking of all morning. And these two Oracle cards in the middle, this is kind of the dynamic playing out between these two extremely different groups of, of beings, right? The Reptilians, Hadarians, you don't get much more polarized than that, but they are coming together and the cards we have in the middle representing their connection is New Moon Eclipse, expect powerful change and waning mood, what do you need to release? So I'm gonna talk more specifically about all of these cards in a bit, but I think I would like to share kind of how I got to this point. And this isn't just coming from me. I have uh, re been receiving activations from some of you guys. Um, a few of my private clients I have been speaking with and doing readings for over the past few days have really brought in activations for me. I was gonna, I don't, I don't know if you guys want your names to be shared, so I won't, I won't share your names because I don't know if you'd be okay with that, but um, you know who you are, anybody I've been talking to in the first week of November, if you want to leave a comment, um, you know, then everybody else can know who you are too. So basically a few days ago, I received from one of my private clients a reptilian activation and he didn't, I don't think he knew that this was coming through, but he uh, got a reading from me and that night I in my dream, in my dream time, I attended a meeting of reptilian starseeds on the astral plane. And not only did I get to reconnect with all of these reptilian starseeds, I met a higher dimensional reptilian being who was incredibly benevolent. I want to make it very clear that there is a group of benevolent reptilians, reptilians who have evolved beyond their you know, very negative entity, um, kind of evil being type of people. They have been evolving. They've been expanding just like everybody else. And I got to meet one of these beings. He was, the best way I can describe him is a divine warrior for the light. And I actually asked to receive a card to show me his archetype. And it was justice. He's, he's that kind of archetype, this justice warrior. His energy was incredible. Um, like Ace of Swords, Justice type of energy, so bright, so um, intellectual, lots of air energy. And I just felt that it was such a warrior type of energy. And I felt that he was coming through to not only represent some of these benevolent reptilians, but also to act as a protector figure for many of us. And so when I woke up from that dream, it was incredible because I had never really, I had kind of suspected that I had had past lives as a reptilian, but I didn't really know anything about them. So that's something new I've been kind of integrating this week, um, reconnecting with my reptilian heritage, which is fascinating. <laughs> Um, but simultaneously, so I had this reptilian activation and I met this benevolent reptilian warrior. And then simultaneously, I was, you know, talking to a lot of my Hadarian sisters. And I was like, this is weird, right? To have reptilian energy and Hadarian energy coming in at the same time. 
very strange because those energies are quite different. But I started to think, well, this isn't happening randomly. There must be some kind of connection. What is the connection between the reptilians and the Hadarians? What is going on? Um, why are these two things coming together at once? And basically, I've been sitting on this for a few days and asking and receiving more information and doing other spreads. And then now seeing this spread, it's starting to make sense. First of all, I really, I've been wondering what type of beings attacked Hadar, who invaded Hadar, who caused the destruction of our planet. Um, I know many of you are Hadarians. I know so, so many of you, and, and, and I love that. I love connecting with Hadarians. It is the best. So if any of you like have any specific information about what kind of beings invaded Hadar, uh, please leave me a comment. I would love to know about that. I sort of Googled it a bit, but you know how weird Googling starseed stuff is. I didn't really find anything that I really resonated with. So um, I'll leave it up to you guys to bring anything through that you think might be relevant. So, but what I've been getting is at least, at least some of the beings that invaded Hadar were reptilian. And this whole, so that, that's kind of the basis of the reptilian Hadarian connection is that the reptilians came in as these service to self, negative entities, you know, narcissistic, <laughs> all of that thing came in and, you know, destroyed our planet and we fled. We didn't defend ourselves. We just, we died or we fled. And we have been dealing with the fallout for that um, ever since we came to Earth. And I think this dynamic has been, I mean, it plays out in many different ways, what, ways right? This is also part of a larger archetype. It reminds me so much of, you know, the Orion Wars and, you know, on a human level, any kind of relationship, you know, the whole empath narcissist paradigm, um, a lot of empaths get in those terrible relationships with narcissists and this same type of energy plays out in many different fractals. And one of these fractals is the reptilians and the Hadarians. And I was been feeling into this, feeling into this. And I was thinking about how my husband um, has very strong reptilian heritage and all of his life, he has random people come up to him and be like, hey, hey, you, let me tell you about the reptile people that live underground. And <laughs> It's so funny, like the reptilians have, are always trying to get his attention and a lot of what he is doing in this life is transmuting some of those reptilian shadow lives and anybody who has reptilian heritage, and I bet a lot of you do, um, anybody with reptilian heritage is working on helping evolve the reptilian collective consciousness so that more of them can, um, you know, access their empathy and more of them can become more compassionate and opening themselves up to the flow of unconditional love so, they, so that they do not have to stay in their, um, you know, negative service to self, um, cut off from source type of place. The reptilian collective also, you know, deserves to evolve. And so if any of you have reptilian heritage, sure, you might have had some reptilian shadow lives, but all of this is just in service to helping the reptilians evolve and access unconditional love as well. So I think that's worth noting. What was I saying? Yeah, so why was I talking about my husband? My husband is my twin flame. And so I have thought a lot about the whole twin flame dynamic. And in the past few days, for some reason, I have been thinking a lot about the difference between the yogic path of ascension and the tantric path of ascension. And what do I mean by that? I mean, I don't really, this doesn't really have anything to do with yoga, you know, doing yoga, like exercise or meditation or tantric sex. Uh, I'm using those terms more loosely just to mean the yogic path of ascension being kind of like the traditional Buddhist monk think, somebody who ascends their consciousness through solitude, through meditating, through their own, um, unitary relationship between themselves and source and just evolving their consciousness as one singular being. The tantric path on the other, other hand is kind of the path of the twin flame. Any, any two beings who um, are evolving themselves and each other through their, their polaric and dialectical relationship with each other. And I can just tell you from my own experience with my husband, it's like, that's not always easy. In fact, before we ever got together. I knew him for years and I hated him. I hated him so much. And now I know it's not that I hated him. It's that I was so drawn to him, but at the same time, so incredibly triggered. <laughs> we triggered each other. It was, it was nuts. So we couldn't, we couldn't, um, 
like get together as a couple until we resolved enough of our polarities to get together. And now even still, you know, our relationship with each other is just the most defining relationship that we could ever have in our lives. Like there is nobody else for either of us. And the relationship goes so, so far beyond just romance. It is, we are the forces that spiritually evolve each other constantly, um, passing energy back and forth, healing and triggering and evolving. And it's really hard to describe, but that is what I mean about the tantric path. Somebody who is evolving their consciousness through the relationship with their polar opposite, their twin flame. And it's funny, before uh, before I ever woke up and before I knew anything about anything to do with spirituality, me and my husband called each, we call ourselves the cosmic duality. That was like our little in-joke with each other. So yeah, um, you know, deep down our souls, we, we knew that we were twin flames and we knew that this was important. So anyway, what does all of that have to do with the reptilians and the Hadarians? They are a twin flame dynamic. They are the tantric path. This is, they are polar opposites that are evolving each other through their relationship. And yes, sometimes that has been horrible and resulted in, you know, the reptilians completely taking advantage of and murdering and killing the Hadarians. And I actually have a past life where I remember my husband and I, I mean, we weren't married in that life because I was a Catholic priest in medieval England and he was also a man. He was a like a highwayman, like outlaw vagabond type and he captured me and tortured me and murdered me. <laughs> so yes, you know, these relationships can go like that. That is when the polarization is the most extreme and the energies are the most dense and and, you know, difficult. Those are the most difficult manifestations of these energies, just like when the reptilians attacked Hadar and, you know, murdered us and chased us out. But that doesn't stay like that. We keep evolving. We keep spiraling out, spiraling out until we get to the place where, like my husband and I, we come together and we are in, you know, a loving, healthy relationship. And that is the place that the reptilians and the Hadarians are getting. And this is really important on a galactic level because this being able to harmonize the polarity between the reptilians and the Hadarians, this is galactic karmic alchemy is the phrase that is coming to mind. And as you can see, <laughs> we have the lovers on both of them. They both got the lovers from different decks. And as soon as I saw that, literally, I was just standing here like, holy shit, no wonder I was guided to use two completely different decks because they both got the lovers that entirely confirmed the thought I had all morning, I was like, man, the reptilians and the Hadarians, they're, they're twin flames, they're twin flames, they're, they're on the tantric path. And I thought I was kind of crazy until those, until these lovers cards came out. Oh my God. <laughs> so there you have it. <laughs> okay. I hope some of that made at least some sense to some of you. <laughs> now, now that I've kind of established my, my background to what I think is happening here, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about these other cards so we can see what this all means and what is really going on and where we're going from here. So, okay, many different fractals are happening, right? The reptilians and the Hadarians are resolving their polarities and are coming together to create something new. And this is playing out in many different fractals, I can tell you just for, for myself, for example, this is playing out inside of me internally. I have both reptilian and Hadarian heritage and I am learning to harmonize that within my own self. It is playing out in my marriage life, you know, with me being resonating primarily as a Hadarian, my husband writing, resonating primarily as a reptilian. In our relationship, this energy is playing out. This is also playing out in various different energetic constructs on planet earth right now. Um, you know, I basically never want to talk about politics on this, on this channel, but I am filming this on November 5th of 2020. And let me just say that, you know, I, I just simply attempt to observe the human political game. I just try to observe it with neutrality and let it be. Um, but this dynamic is also playing out in American politics. They are, ha the Americans are having their election right now. And this dynamic is playing out 
in the United States on a political level. And you could come up with any number of other observations of ways like you guys probably know of some ways where this dynamic is playing out either in your life or maybe other planets you've lived on. Different levels of society, all of it. So what is happening with the reptilian energy? So, okay, they got, besides the lovers, the lovers cards, those cards came through to confirm for me that I was not in fact insane for thinking that the reptilians and the Hadarians are twin flames. <laughs> Incredible. But so, so the reptilians, they came up with the hanged man and the fool. So cool. Okay, so with this hanged man card, the reptilians are learning to see things from a new perspective after having gone inward to find revelation, essentially, and they are getting their fresh start as the fool. And I, I, used, I used this deck for the Hadarians because it's so scorpionic and... Or did I, did I just say Hadarians? Obviously, I meant reptilians. <laughs> I used this deck for the reptilians because is it, it is so scorpionic and... I get such a Scorpio vibe from the rep reptilians. So this fool card is, it's basically death, right? <laughs> That's death, but he's got, you know, his stick <laughs> with his belongings over his shoulder. And I just, I see this as such a turning point moment for reptilian consciousness, having made some kind of self-sacrifice, having done some inner work, gaining a new perspective and getting a whole new fresh start. This is like a massive karmic clearing, which is important <laughs> not just for the reptilian collective, but also for any of us who have reptilian heritage. And and even if you don't think you have reptilian heritage, even if you, you're only identifying as a Hadarian, it is still important for good things to be going on with the reptilian collective because you're tied to them through this twin flame, this tantric, this karmic relationship where it's a polar, a polar thing going on. And over here, more good news for the Hadarians. Wheel of Fortune and the Emperor. So yeah, our fortunes are changing. I think the Hadarians, we have had one hell of a long bad ride, right? Either you, We either died on Hadar or we fled Hadar in terror and fear and we've been traumatized because of this ever since we've been on Earth. But it is all about to change, change and shift. And I see the Emperor coming in as an amazingly good sign because... I have done private readings for so many Hadarians and a constant theme for all of us is essentially solar plexus issues, having like an underactive or a blocked solar plexus. We all struggle with feeling small. We all struggle with, you know, anxiety. We struggle with just not understanding how to operate properly on earth. And it really amounts to a lack of masculine energy, a lack of solar plexus energy. And so for this emperor coming in for the Hadarians, that is all of that energy of feeling small, of feeling shy, of feeling anxious, of feeling incapable of standing up for ourselves. Because what did we do when Hadar was attacked? Like I said in a, I know I talked about this in one of my other Hadarian videos, but we literally couldn't defend ourselves. Like we didn't have the energetic capability. We didn't have the codes. We didn't have the frequencies. We literally could not defend ourselves. And so that is one of the things we have been learning on earth is learning that it's okay to defend ourselves. You know, of course, I don't think we'll, I don't really see Hadarians ever getting to the point of being warlike or being combative, but just having enough um, ability to stand up for ourselves that, we are becoming able to defend ourselves and knowing that that's okay and that that is our right. And, you know, that often plays plays out in personal relationships, any kind of interpersonal interpersonal relationship where, you know, we need to be able to tell people no. We need to be able to not allow people to take advantage of us. And these things Hadarians really struggle with because Hadarians are so collective and so used to being part of a collective and so empathic and so open-hearted. They we really struggle <laughs> to embody this kind of emperor energy. But I think we've finally done it. All of these lifetimes on earth and we've had some really shitty lifetimes on earth. Finally, we're like healing our solar plexus. This is all about getting that proper solar plexus activation. So it's really cool because we have learned this. We have learned to embody this emperor energy from <laughs> 
the, our relationship with reptilian energy because they obviously have an, oh, an overabundance of emperor energy. So this whole thing of, you know, the reptilians invading Hadar, that's been playing out in all of our encounters with nar narcissists and sociopaths on earth. All of that, they have been teaching us how to embody this emperor energy. And they have been through very uncomfortable, through very painful and polaric means, teaching us how to activate our solar plexus. And finally, finally, we've done it. And likewise, they are also learning to become more like us. They are learning to open their hearts. They are learning the value of empathy, the utility of compassion. They are learning that they don't need to stay in their lower vibrational state. They can open themselves up to source. They can ascend and they can be part of a greater collective. And, and that their energy, their scorpionic energy, their masculine energy, that that is all valuable and useful and something to be proud of and something to be loved as long as it is um, expressed in a, I don't know, a more healthy way. We're learning all, all of this, this, these polar opposite energies are being harmonized and are being integrated and are being transmuted and being brought into their higher frequency ranges, like their higher permutations of these energies so that everything comes together and nothing is, nothing is left behind, right? We we're needing to learn to accept each other for who, who we all are and accept that all energies are part of source. That's, that's a big deal here, right? There is no manifestation of energy that is not part of source consciousness. Literally everything that is is an emanation of source consciousness. So, and that's part of really embodying unconditional love is understanding that, that literally everything, no matter how evil or negative or terrifying or narcissistic or sociopathic our human minds think it is, everything is an emanation of source consciousness. And we are, this is also one of the things that humanity is attempting to do as, a, as we, as humanity becomes the human collective trying to figure out how we make sense of that, how we pull this all together and how we embody all of the far flung aspects of ourselves without rejecting something, without rejecting somebody saying, oh, you have these beliefs that I don't like, you're rejected, or you have these habits that I don't like, you're rejected. <laughs> we are learning to knock that off and to accept all parts of ourselves. And when we accept the parts of ourselves that we don't like, that actually means that those alienated, rejected, little orphaned parts of ourselves that might have been acting out and throwing tantrums and doing bad things that we didn't like, if they are accepted, then they don't need to function in that low vibrational state anymore. Like scorpionic energy doesn't need to be all, you know, horror movie type of energy. It can be brought up into a higher vibrational state and it becomes independence, it becomes self-sufficiency, it becomes pure transformative energy. So there is so much good to be had here. We just need to accept it and use it in a way that doesn't alienate us. <sighs> okay. <laughs> and finally, these two Oracle cards in the middle. Expect powerful change, new moon eclipse. And what do you need to release? Waning moon. So especially for those of you watching this in November 2020, this month is a massive healing month. The healing is often going to look like some kind of tower moment coming in, some kind of trauma, some kind of catastrophe for a lot of people. For you guys, I think there will be less catastrophes because the more the more you have been walking your path, the less traumatic these things are, but you might see people around you going through tower moments. So, but no matter where you are at in your journey, there's something you need to release. You can identify that. You probably already know what that is. Letting go of the crap you don't want to bring forward with you into 2021, actually, into the next year. And for those of you watching this further down the road, the same thing applies, you know, just adjust it to your current timeline. What needs to go? What do you need to release? You need to release it because powerful change is coming through new moon eclipse. And again, for the people watching this in 2020, we have a new moon eclipse. I think it is on December 14th. You'd have to check the exact day, but it's around mid-December. Mid 
it's going to be crazy. It's the new moon in Sagittarius and it is a solar eclipse. It's going to be nuts. <laughs> it's going to be nuts. So much is going to come through there. This is, this eclipse is going to be like a portal, um, just channeling energy down at us. Um, massive change. So <laughs> just massive changes coming through in December. And also for anybody, you know, watching this later, still the same thing applies, but you know, I can't give you an exact date of when that might be happening. But also just in terms of this reptilian and this Hadarian um, twin flame dynamic that's going on, I just, I feel like something, they're birthing something new. Because what, what is the point of the twin flame dynamic? It's, well, to evolve and ascend the two consciousnesses involved, but it is also to become greater than the sum of their parts. It is to birth something brand new. Just think of how, you know, and, you know, physical beings make babies, <laughs> right? You have two parents and when they come together, they create a child, something greater than the sum of their parts. So I feel like some kind of energetic birthing is happening here. The reptilians and the Hadarians have gone through all of this, all of these eons of trauma and battle and pain and suffering, but on a, on a higher level of all of our consciousnesses, it, our oversouls knew that this was all part of the plan. This was in order to create something. There was a purpose here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the, what they're creating. I don't know what is being brought into existence. I don't know what this massive change is going to be, but as you can see, I, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, my voice has been like wobbling through this whole video. I'm, I'm not crying or anything. I feel fantastic, but I'm so excited and I can feel the energy like shaking. I'm kind of shaking because this is um, a lot. And I just happen to feel flows of energy physically, physically in my body. So it makes it hard to do things like talk and, and hold a steady hand. So I don't know. I think you guys can feel, you can feel the energy on this one. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't have any information about what this change is going to be only that we know it's coming. So Whew. Thank you for listening to me rant. Um, it's amazing to get this out. It is such an honor and a privilege to be able to share this with you. I used to just sit around and I would feel this kind of information come in and it would get stuck inside of me and roll around and around and around and I would kind of obsess on it for days and weeks and it would drive me crazy. I have really learned it is so important for me to share this information just to get it out there. So really thank you so much to anybody who watched that watched this because it gave me the opportunity to pass this energy on so that I don't need to hold on to it anymore. I've put it out there and that's all I needed to do. I needed to put it out there and now I can go about my day feeling much more satisfied and calm because I know the flow is continuing. We need to keep our energies flowing. That is something I'm learning so much. Never hang on to the energy. Keep it flowing. Put yourself into the flow receive the energy and then immediately pass it back on. Keep it flowing. Keep it flowing. So I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.